New members are added to the group. Merwin is not the only one with a new plan, as the heroes decide they have to take out the master monolith. Hello, entertainment enthusiasts. This is Ray, and this is the Fandom Realm. And today I am recapping and reviewing Episode 2 of The Witcher Blood Origin. As always, spoilers are included, so just be aware. In Episode 2 of The Witcher Blood Origin, we are introduced to Meldoff, a character who has a grudge against the Golden Empire. Meldoff is on a mission to find an elf named Talsin of the One-Eye and uses her Warhammer, which seems to have a Mind of its own to attack and injure elves in order to find Talson. Despite being covered in blood, Meldoff is able to defeat the elves and continue her search. Skion, Ayla, and Fial are traveling south and trying to avoid the expanding Golden Empire. They arrive at a village called Dadewood, which is known for its mercenaries. When they go to the bank, they are recognized and targeted by the Empire. They are forced to fight against a group of warriors and are eventually smoked out when a fire breaks out. However, they are able to escape by breaking into an underground vault, which was previously used by the dwarven banker. When the scene returns to the trio, they are in the woods and have managed to escape from the vault. Skion is injured, so Ayla and Fial try to find ingredients to come up with something to heal her. They come across Brother Death, also known as Callan, who agrees to bring them to his healer. Merwin is aware that she will be disposed of by Baylor once she is no longer useful to him. She is approached by a kitchen hand who talks about a famine in the Empire. In response, Merwin admits that she doesn't know much about the outside world and she wants to see it for herself. Merwin starts making some plans and she recruits an elf mage to act as her spy and to steal a book called the Book of Monoliths. She wants the mage to learn how to open the gateways. Merwin escapes from the castle while wearing a lowborn cloak and without being noticed by the soldiers. Seeing the famine and realizing that she is the one that caused it by her own betrayal of the kingdoms makes her feel some guilt. Now back to our heroes. The trio along with Callan arrive at the healer's location where they find that Sindril has also been released or possibly escaped from his cell. Meanwhile, Meldoff has found and killed Talson off screen and decided to paint his blood on the wall as a form of tribute. Moving back to Merwin, while out in the city, she discovers Aridin in bed with another man and agrees to keep it a secret. In exchange, she wants to demonstrate to Baylor that the military and the crown are united and that he answers to them rather than the other way around. She wants to expand the empire, but they are forgetting about the existence of a large demonic monster that can kill anyone. Merwin decides that the best way to continue her rebellion and maintain control is through a marriage, but one that she chooses. She wants Fial to be brought back to her alive and forced to give her an heir. She believes that those at odds can become allies, which makes the pair consider their options. This plan is a contrast to her previous actions, which involve killing many people, basically in cold blood, due to her objections to being married off to another king. On to our heroes, Zikari and Sindril work together to heal Skion's wound, which is successful. And Skion Skion thanks them for their help. Sindril reveals that a horrific beast is coming and that Merwin killed Fial's brother. He explains that they only have a limited amount of time before an apocalyptic event occurs and they need to destroy the master monolith to prevent it from happening. Sindril mentions that he used a gateway to arrive before them, although it's still unclear how he was able to do so from a prison cell. He decides to stay with the group and help them come up with a plan to destroy the monolith and defeat the great beast. He opens a portal which takes them to a strange world where a creature emerges from the lake and starts attacking them. And the episode ends. Now I just want to take a second to go over and throw out some thoughts and reactions to this episode. And I don't have a lot here so this is probably going to be a rather short episode today. But uh, just a couple things here. First off I love Meldoff. You know a lot of these characters that we saw starting out in the first 
first episode. I didn't think they were really all that interesting. I didn't think they were that creative, but I just love Meldoff and the way she is written and her character as a dwarf and um, with the Warhammer and their relationship. It's it's just interesting to me and I think she's a, a lot of good comic relief and I think that this character has really brought something to this series that it was missing and that's a little bit of creativity. Now a couple things I'm going to just throw in here because I'm not sure what has happened. Uh, the first thing is of course and I, I didn't mention it in the recap was this idea that Merwin is now wanting to be the savior of the Golden Empire. She's wanting to she's she's seeing this famine. She feels very guilty about it. She's wanting to make things better. She actually is almost completing a hill turn and trying to become a, a good ruler and a good leader after she was responsible for murdering all of these people. And of course, all of that went back to the fact she wasn't wanting to get hitched off um, when her brother, the king, was trying to get her married off to another king at the time. She reacted very badly to that. And now she's the one that is wanting to bring Fial in and have heirs to the throne with him. And so it's just a little interesting and this whole potential trying to turn her from bad guy to good guy. I guess it's trying to humanize her a little and it's it's one of those things that can be very dangerous because in series, to me, you need a really bad bad guy. Okay, um, But you can get away with a bad guy that people understand and are sympathetic to. And it seems like they're sort of trying to play back and forth here. And that doesn't usually work either. So we'll see what happens with Merwin. Next thing, and this is just one of those things. I don't know if I've missed something. So if you guys are out there listening to this, watching this, and I missed it, please tell me where to go back and look. But how did Sindral go from his cell to the forest out here to help all of our heroes? Okay. I mean, apparently that cell was supposed to be magic proof. How did he get out of it? How did he open a portal? He says he opened a portal. I don't know how that happened. It just sort of was whoosh. It happened and they can't explain it. And that's something I think is a little problem here. Um, this is a major hole because if he can do that, you know, why can't he open the portal really anywhere he wants? Just a lot of problems with that. And I'll tell you, it jumped out of this this episode at me huge when it happened. I I was just sort of sitting watching along, and then all of a sudden we go from Sindral being in jail talking to Baylor last time to now Sindral is in the forest uh, trying to help heal Skion and how that happened. I don't know, and that is something bad for the series. Now, just a few other things, and this is going to be hit and miss a little bit here, but you know, I really enjoy quests. I love the fact they are getting these characters together. I think together they would do great. But the big problem I have so far is we're seeing so much of their quest and what they're doing. It's off screen. You know, we're not getting to see the action. We're not getting to see the character build. And so I, I think we're missing out on a lot that would make this show so, so much better. We also, of course, when we, we look at things taking place off screen, of course, Meldoff killing Towson, the one eye, that was basically her whole quest. That's what she was there for to start with. And they let it happen without showing her fight. I was a little disappointed. And, you know, that was a, a good spot for us to see her bashing some heads in with that Warhammer, but we didn't get to see it. And again, this is this is a mark off. Um, these are definitely marked downs on this episode of The Witcher. Now, with that, that's a few of my thoughts and reactions to this episode of Witcher Blood Origin. And of course, this is episode two. I do want to give it a grade and I hate to say it, but I think this is going to get a D plus. It was a great episode. Lots of jumping around, lots of things going on off screen that we're not seeing. We're not getting really any character development. And it's just like they threw all these people out on a quest and didn't have any plan for them. And so with that, we're going to go with a D plus here. Now, having said that, everybody, I hope you have enjoyed this review and recap. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment below. And I'll see you next time on the Fandom Realm.